Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. If you ask me what the best operating system is, I'm just going to not answer you, most likely, uh, because I would have to ask you a series of close to 300 questions to arrive at the answer of what the best operating system for you would be, just like I'd have to do the same thing to find the best computer for you. There are a lot of factors that come into play. I share my email address quite openly in the videos, um, chris at perillo.com. I, I, I do get everybody's emails. I'm not able to respond to all of them, so please don't be upset if I don't, because I do get busy and I do get overwhelmed, you can imagine, with as many people that I have following me. Uh, I get a lot of uh, notifications, specifically through email. I got one here from Woomis, and uh, he wrote, I'm just going to read part of it here. Yesterday I was consulting a client about OS choices and why I'm advocating Windows Vista with Service Pack 1 these days over XP. And my client asked me, well, what OS do you use? He says, in reality, I'm currently using OS 10, but his question got me thinking. If storage failure rate was 0%, as in non-existent, what OS would you trust to store your most important documents, photos, keepsakes, and otherwise? It's a pretty good question. What would you trust? And this question you will likely answer differently a year from now uh, than you the way you answer would answer it today um, because software will constantly evolve. Um, I've you know made certain choices uh, with my primary operating system, uh, and I use all operating systems, uh, whether it be Windows XP, Windows Vista, uh, Linux, OS X. I have pretty much that variety somewhere in my house. Uh, and does that bother me? No. Variety is certainly the spice of life. Uh, especially when it comes to operating systems and software. That's me as a power user, as a technology consumer. But most people just want one thing, and they want the best thing. It gets a little tiring when I'm asked that question because I, 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 can't, I can't answer it. And, and, and most of the emails I get are from people asking me what the best is or what they should do, and I don't know. I don't have the answer, and I've, I've explained this before in earlier videos. I just don't know. There's so many variables at play. What I encourage you to do is take a look and assess the total cost of ownership, also known as TCO, of your choice for a computer and a platform. Think about everything that's going to happen after you get that new system after you adopt something new or maybe it's just something that's the same but you know a different species if that makes any sense um that is to say if you stay in the realm of pc or if you stay in the realm of windows and just do side grades or upgrades or downgrades it, you, i think you kind of know what i'm saying um and then look at the entire experience so you can't okay you can Look at the computer as just this piece of hardware, but that's the wrong way to think about it because it's not just a piece of hardware, it's a piece of software that is in the piece of hardware that is run with uh, these various services outside of this particular area. So it's software, hardware, service. It's a variety of things that create this comprehensive experience. And if any part of that experience is broken, it's just kind of an incomplete experience. So you have to look for as much of 100% as you can get in terms of the things that you want from your computer. And if you don't care what's on it or what it's, uh, you know, what it's running, etc., well, then you've got a lot more maneuverability, in, in which case you're probably going to go with the cheapest option. Cheapest isn't always the best, though. Again, you got to look at total cost of ownership. Sometimes when you buy a, a cheap PC, you end up with a hell of a lot more problems than someone who spends more, which isn't to say that the more you spend, the better computer you get. So there's really no answer. You've got to look at the entire experience. 
You've got to look at the community's experience with one particular product, one particular piece of hardware, software, operating system, service, and take that whole and apply your decision against that. Um, you know, for me, I have found that Mac OS X in, in its time machine feature uh, has been just a, a weight lifted off my shoulders. I don't have to worry about backup anymore. It's done. Uh, I, I don't have to worry about it. I, it's done. I said it twice because that's such an important piece of the comprehensive experience. Because even if you've got everything that's complete, if you weren't performing a backup and something happens, yeah, suddenly you're going to wish that you'd done the backup. And backup is one of those things that you always wish you had done after something bad happens. So if you're not backing up, uh, you're going to want to start doing that with a great degree of, of regularity, both on-site and off-site backups. But that's something that the operating system allows me to do. Now, you may assert that there's software that can run on other operating systems. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Um, you can add those experiences to Windows. Uh, I'm sure you could add similar experiences to Linux. Um, it's all just going to depend on you. But I, I'm always curious to see more than just what people's decisions are, but to see if they've evolved over time. I mean, if you see the landscape of operating systems, at least consumer-grade operating systems or operating systems marketed towards consumers, if you see today's marketplace uh, in much the same way as you saw last year's marketplace, or maybe even a year before then, you're really missing the mark. Like, because a couple of years ago, you had XP and OS X, um, and now you've got a much more balanced uh, ecosystem, if you will. Uh, you've got, well, XP's getting phased out, but now you have a new version of Windows, Windows Vista. You've got a new version of OS X in Leopard. Um, you know, Ubuntu is releasing new additions uh, with a great degree of regularity. So Linux on the desktop is certainly catching uh, more minds today than it did a couple of years ago, and that will continue to accelerate. Um, every year, well, okay, maybe that's, that's a little too frequent. Every other year, every two years, the operating system landscape changes because a new version is released. Things change. Things evolve. And our reliance on desktop software for a lot of the storage, even that is coming into question. I didn't install a single piece of office software on my brother's computer uh, when I was building it for him the other day. Uh, was reinstalling Windows on this machine and uh, got to the point, I said, well, do I put Open Office on there? Do I give him a, a copy of Microsoft Office that I have? Uh, what do I do? And I thought, you know, he can use Google Docs. Nothing to install. It lives on the web. You don't have to worry about backing up your documents or accessing them from multiple locations. It's all on the web. Same thing with photos. You can upload them to Google's Photos Gallery. What do they call it now? Uh, it's in relation to what is it, Picasso web, web, web Albums. Web Albums. I'm having an issue saying that tonight. Um, you, Griff says don't trust the web. Certainly, you, you, you can only place your trust in reputable companies. I'd like to believe that Google is a reputable company, or at least reputable enough, uh, that they're not going to do anything colossally stupid, uh, specifically with user data. Um, maybe I have too much trust in them, but I also believe that's the future of a lot of this data storage. The computer is going to act as a gateway to transfer that information, that data, off-site, so that backing up locally is not, I mean, you don't even think about it because, well, the documents just live on the web. The photos, the videos, the everything just lives on the web. I don't even keep a local archive of the videos that I'm putting up on, onto the internet. Uh, I've got some of them stored at Blip TV. Others are stored at Yahoo. Uh, yet others, YouTube. Um, I'm not storing them locally. I, I just, I'm not. I mean, they're important to me, but... At the same time, um, I guess I'm placing a lot of trust in Google slash YouTube and, well, specifically Blip TV. Um, I don't think that they're going to disappear anytime soon. I, I really, I really don't. They're just fantastic services, fantastic brands, uh, good stuff, and you know, quite honestly, I don't want to keep 
track of as many videos as I produce, uh, specifically if I know uh, that they're they're perfectly safe on the web. So again, the need and reliance for one operating system over another on the desktop it's not as important as it used to be and two years from now it'll be even less important um, to, to, to really need the perfect operating system on your desktop it's going to need to be a good one in a comprehensive experience but if any part of that experience has got uh, holes in it then you really need to start thinking twice about that total cost of ownership it may not be worth it for you to make that choice and stick with the choice that you, you went with. And of course, you know, there are edge cases. If you're a gamer on the desktop, Windows is your only choice. Uh, if all you do is surf the web, period, end of story, Linux is a perfect choice. Um, if you don't really fit into either one of those categories, well, then you could probably consider buying a Mac. Uh, it's, it just depends. So I'm interested in hearing maybe not just your choice today, but specifically what you recommend to other people. And most importantly, if you have changed your mind in the past couple of years, I want to know. I want to know what brought you to that decision of changing your mind because I think that's where the interesting story is. Uh, and if you haven't ever changed your mind about your hardware and software choices, you, my friend, are living a sad, miserable existence because you're likely still using links to browse the web, Eudora for email, and you name the outdated service or software hardware product that would make you look like a Luddite. Yes, and you're probably also on a 386. It's just painful to think about really is that 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 hurts me to even see that written oh just, I'm, I'm, i want to cry blood because there are people out there like that and if you're one of those people i don't know how the hell you're watching this video because i don't think your computer can handle it i'm not making fun of anybody i'm just asking a general question uh hopefully we can uh, get some good dialogue going here not just some os wars i i, I don't want to hear what the best is i, I want to hear what your thoughts are and how they've evolved uh in a general sense so my email address, again, is chris at perillo.com. Feel free to email me anytime. You're also welcome to swing by the chat room. Uh, we're typically talking tech, and throughout the day, every time I turn to the chat room, someone is always mentioning something related to operating systems. So you know we're going to be talking about it right now. Uh, you're welcome to stop by anytime, day or night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.